very, very much. <clears throat> well, thank you, folks, for being for coming out, uh, braving the uh, the rain. Uh, we do need it, but does it all have to come at the same time? Um, that's fine, folks. Thank you very much for this for this um, uh, opportunity. I've been trying to get around to as many of the tea parties and uh, activist groups, grassroots activist groups around the nation, around the city, around the city, around the state, as possible. Mostly because the I feel very very strongly, my friends, that the point of view of an of an American, of someone who is an American first and a Hispanic second, or someone who is of Mexican descent second, that our point of view is rarely heard, particularly if you're a Tea Party activist. I mean, it is, it scares the pants off of somebody like Julian Castro, who can't speak Spanish, to see somebody like me walking around, who can debate him under the table in two languages, okay? Or somebody like Leticia Vanderpute, with a last name like Vanderpute, who claims that she's very Hispanic, with a name like Vanderpute, and criticizes Ted Cruz because Ted doesn't speak Spanish, but she has a last name Vanderpute. Did you get my drift on that one? Okay. These folks, my friends, unfortunately have scared the Republican establishment into a corner. And if they would let those of us that know how to debate them chase those rats out into the open, then they wouldn't have to behave like rhinos. Okay? I'm speaking very bluntly, but I'm going to speak very, very common sense, which sometimes is not heard in these type of discussions, because they get so emotional. <gasps> oh my gosh. You know, somebody like Jason Villalba, who I'm sure I would offend in the, few, in the first five minutes of a talk, because I would ask, what part of the word illegal do you not understand? Okay? The fact of the matter, my friends, is that for five generations, my family has seen and fought Yes, fought illegal immigration in South Texas and Laredo. For example, my father organized, if you can imagine, a union to close shop of printers because illegal Mexicans used to take their jobs in Laredo, Texas. Now that was in a time when unions used to stand up for American workers. Okay? But this whole idea of illegal immigration, that's been around since there was a border created. And this whole notion of criminal behavior, that's been around forever. Those of you that uh, have had the opportunity to listen to my uh, show on the uh, webcast on Raging Elephants, and I really encourage you to listen to it, I always talk about these corridos that they talk about, these ballots in South Texas, because many of them have to do nothing with them but have to have uh, glorified um, contraband. You know, this famous ballot from the 1920s, Cielito Lindo. You know, it's a beautiful ballot. Everybody always hums it. But it's all about somebody running contraband and missing his girlfriend. You know, the uh, the Pancho Villa song. You know, a cucaracha. He talks about carrying marijuana. You know, oh, but you can't say that because you're insulting Mexican culture. I got news for you. I got news for you. I don't care. Okay? Did you catch that? On and let me say it in two languages, no me importa. Okay? Because I'm not telling you anything wrong, anything, I'm not telling you a lie. It would be awful if I was up here lying to you, you know, like Obamacare is going to be great for you, right? 
You know, like we're not going to have any illegal aliens in Obamacare, right? Okay? Be wonderful if I was lying to you, but I'm not. What we've got, my friends, is a situation where we have a border that's out of control and we have people pandering politically to a group that, in my opinion, is never going to vote in large numbers Republican or conservative. Never. I've said it. Never. Okay? Get over it. On the other hand, you've got a group of people who are integrating quietly into American society, and that's not applauded. I go to my Thanksgiving dinner, half of my nephews are married to Anglos. Okay? Big deal. It's happening. That has happened to the Jewish community. The Jewish community has been upset in America because they're blending in. You know? And that is the beauty of America. But that's not the beauty of liberals or rhinos. As we speak, my friends, let me speak bluntly. As we speak, as I am here speaking to you right now, John Boehner is in San Antonio at a fundraiser. And that fundraiser is sponsored by the, the San Antonio Chamber and by the Hispanic Chamber. Now, if they put money in his pockets, what do you think his position is going to be about guest workers? About amnesty? This is something that we need to worry about, my friends, because this past week, this past Saturday, you know how many of us got out there and voted? In most places, less than 5% total of the voters. Now, when the chamber is pumping in money, and we're voting in less than 5%, who do you think they're going to listen to? Okay? Who do you think they're going to listen to? They will ignore us. Do you think Joe Strauss, get that one on camera, do you think Joe Strauss worries about people that vote whenever it's convenient? Well, he's got over here his lobbyists giving him money so that he can buy votes, so he can buy his elections for his friends. We've got Castro and State Representative Mike D'Ariano and Leticia Vanderpute, the three of them, in collusion with the biggest developer in San Antonio, in South Texas, David Zachary, in collusion to put together a bill that denied San Antonians the right to vote on the sale of public property. Now you tell me, in the 21st century, what kind of a politician sponsors legislation that denies Americans the right to vote? You know? What kind of, And who is saying anything about it? Have you heard Abbott say anything about it? Have you heard Strauss say anything about it? You know? Why won't they say it? Because this guy's last name is Biarriam? Or because her last name is Bandipute? And she's a woman, to boot. Oh my gosh. Heaven forbid. You know? Why are we being cowards on this matter? And immigration is a is an albatross that's gonna that's gonna be around our necks, my friends. It is going to hang us. I'm telling you. This idea of giving amnesty, even partial amnesty to folks, it's it's straight from hell. I can tell you. You know, I've debated in Spanish and in English. 
these dreamers. We want to unify, we have to unify the family. We didn't divide the family. They crossed the border and divided it. We didn't divide it. Why can't somebody say that to them? Well, because we're going to hurt their feelings. We're going to lose the Hispanic vote. You know? If we voted 5%, how many, how many of them do you think voted at all? Less than 0.5% this past, this past Saturday. Less than 0.5%. I'm not afraid of them. 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 Yes. I'm not afraid of liberal Hispanics. I'm not afraid of them. And we've got to take that message to, to them, to the streets, to the city councils, to the city halls, to the county commissions, to the state offices. We've got to stand up, my friends. Because this, this situation that we've got, we have a border that is out of control. We have a nation across the border that is not our friend. Let me tell, give you two examples on that. We have a treaty with Mexico about water that feeds into the Rio Grande. They have not honored that treaty in six years. On the contrary, two weeks ago there was a big nasty spill on the Mexican side on a tributary that poured into, into, um, into the Rio Grande. And the EPA and the Texas Environmental Quality folks, they ran around like chickens without a head. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Because it was going to affect the water supply. What did Mexico do? Not a thing. Who's going to the Port Texas Board of Volunteers this week? This weekend? Is it this weekend? The Texas Board of Volunteers, Jim Gibson, very good friend of mine. And uh, in fact, Jim, I got in trouble for being politically incorrect by telling Jim in front of a TV camera that I wanted to play a game with him where I would play illegal alien and he would chase me through the street, through the bushes. <laughs> oh my gosh, you should have seen that reporter. I had to give him an asthma pill. Um, these folks, my friends, that are coming across, 40% of them are no longer Mexicans. So why is Mexico not helping us with their immigration problem? Why aren't they doing something about illegal immigration on their side? Oh, I forget. They're just passing through. You know? A good friend doesn't do that. We don't have that problem in Canada. Oh my gosh. No, it's true. Why don't you put up a border in, why don't we put up a wall in, with Canada? Well, if we needed it, we would. We should. But we don't need it. The border, you know, this past, in the past six months, my friends, in the past six months, more than 160,000 illegal aliens have been picked up in the south sector of, of, uh, of the Border Patrol, which is South Texas. 160,000 in six months. That is a 30% a, 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 a rise. And you know what's even worse? Let me get you more riled up. What's worse is that they're being released after they're caught. What's worse is that the Immigration Naturalization Service, as I used to know it when I used to work there, is picking people up at the border, but not picking them up in the interior. They're not doing any raids in the interior. They're, so what, you know, what, you catch them? Recently, about a month ago, what they were doing was catching any women with children that were caught were released. Overnight, just released. And these women, you know what they were saying? Well, we're going to go try and find a job. Now think about this. Here's a woman with a child, <laughs> hardly any education, what kind of job are they going to get? Particularly with our unemployment. You know, what do you think they're going to do? Who do you think they're going to work for? You know, come on. You know, 
progressive method, they are going to work for you. No, but they'll find a job. Where? You know, who's going to take care of the kid while they're working? You are. My friends, we need to look at these things practically and with common sense. We cannot allow this narrative, this discussion, to be based on fear on the part of the GOP and aggressive racism on part of the Democrats. You know, just last week, the, the, the Democrats put together in San Antonio and in Washington a political action committee for Latinos only. Now, is that racism? For Latinos only? Yes. 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 Come on. But did I hear anyone say anything about that? No. Because it's politically un incorrect. You know? I have blogged my fingers to death. But they just, every now and then I get, you know, heard. There are reporters that are afraid to talk to me. Because I'm confrontational. I'm not confrontational. I'm just telling you the truth. The truth hurts. The facts are there. You know, Ellen Ayala, a reporter with the San Antonio Express, heralded, applauded, did handstands in the paper the other day because this woman, Arellano, I don't know if you remember her, but she was this woman who had a little kid and she took refuge in Chicago in a church in Chicago and asked for sanctuary and they didn't arrest her until finally after a standoff for about three, four months, she left voluntarily and she was deported. Okay, She left her kid in Chicago with friends because apparently he was uh, born here. But recently she crossed with another kid, a new kid that was born in Mexico. Okay, Her husband stayed in Mexico but she crossed to unify the family. Okay? To unify the family. So I call it Elaine Ayala because she writes this wonderful you know, piece. And I call it yeah, Elaine. Don't you see the, a, 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 an irony here? And I'm trying to use small words with her because I know she's Mexican. <laughs> no? Ooh, was that nasty? I didn't know. I'm trying, you know, I, I said, isn't it ironic that she's claiming that she's here to unify her family, but she just left her husband over there? Who are you fooling? Well, we have to look at it in a humanitarian way. Well, when are you going to start looking at the taxpayers in a humanitarian way? You know, us in a humanitarian way. And again, this whole thing, oh, George, you're too mean. Same thing that I hear from my Republican and Hispanic friends. Oh, you're too mean. I'm not mean. You know, I've got, I've got friends who are devout ministers who have gotten into their heads that it is a humanitarian, sacred duty to let illegal aliens stay in the United States because of Jesus and Mary and Joseph going into Egypt. To which I remind them. Okay? They had a passport from God. These people don't. Okay? Secondly, secondly, Christ told people, from my understanding of the scriptures, that if you're going to get to heaven, you have to enter through one door. Okay? Not through anywhere you can and everywhere you want. So with all due respect to my religious friends, that doesn't fly. Okay? We have got to control the borders. It is the right, my friends, of every nation to control its borders. Unless we're going to be a global society and hold each other's hands and sing John Lennon's Imagine There's No Evil. Okay? But how realistic is that? Okay. 
It is our right to defend the borders. It is our right to determine who should enter and who should not. And before, let me tell you, this guest worker program, this Texas solution, and I'm hoping who's the one that's going to the, uh, to the state convention, to the state uh, as a delegate. I am hoping, my friends, that you will fight tooth and nail against the Texas solution which is nothing more than a guest worker program, nothing more than a cheap labor program that has been thrown up there by folks, by the chamber and by rhinos. And let me tell you why. Before we talk about a guest worker program, let's talk along with that about a welfare to work program for all of those lazy butts that are out there sitting around collecting more welfare than working. Yeah. You cannot tell me, my friends. I worked on the 1986 Immigration Act, that one that they've trashed. I worked on it. I went out to meet with California farm work, farmers, with California growers, and they would tell me that they, their wages to pick lettuce, to pick grapes, were comparable to somebody sitting home watching Jerry Springer. Now you tell me, if that is comparable, what do you think people are going to do? Plus, every time that they have a kid, they get more money. So what, you know, these people, they're lazy, but they're not stupid. What do you think they're going to do? So before we talk about a doggone guest worker program, let's talk about a welfare reform program that needs to happen because there are lots of people who need to get, who could be doing the work, who could be doing the work that they claim Americans won't do. Okay? That's number one. Number two, do you really trust Obama? You know, I mean, that's what, that is what the Texas Solution says. We will work on a solution with the, with the um, federal administration. What solution have we worked, what solution have we found to date with that clown? You know, his, his wife gets out there and puts on this face, she needs to, but she puts on his face about the Nigerian girls. We have a Marine sitting in Mexico, in Tijuana, rotting, literally. Where's your face on that one, lady? You know, come on. Again, these folks are not our friends. It's time to start treating Mexico not like a friendly neighbor, but as someone who needs to pull up their pants and grow up. There's an old saying, there's an old, old saying in Spanish that says, poor Mexico, so close to, to so far from God, and so close to the United States. And that's because they have taken up upon themselves since the 1910 revolution to alienate themselves from religion. They did. So they don't think, you, you cannot be an openly religious zealot or an openly religious person. They recognize no religion. They don't recognize any God in Mexico. On the other hand, they are green with envy every time we sneeze. They have been upset about the existence of the United States since before there was a the United States. They were upset with England. And I guarantee, my friends, I got more emotional. I have stood on the pyramids of Mexico in Mexico and felt God connection with my ancestors. But when I stood in Independence Hall and heard the narrative of how each one of the delegates argued and then stood for independence and then for the Constitution. 
That was it. That was it. I knew at that point that I was not a, I'm not a Mexican. That may be where my roots are. I may eat tortillas at home. But I'm an American. And this is what I care about. I don't understand. I don't understand what is so neat about embracing the past, the past, about embracing your culture that you just left that desperately. Are you that insecure? Oh, there's another nasty thing to say. But are you that insecure that you've got to be a Hispanic first? Now, you just heard a little while ago my bio about how I used to work on this stuff about outreach. It doesn't work. The only thing that works, my friends, when you're doing any kind of outreach for anybody, is telling them the truth. Just tell them the truth. Tell them that the government is after your pockets. That translates into any language and into any culture. When you tell people that government wants power, that translates into any culture and into any language. When you tell them that we need politicians who are citizens first and professional politicians second, that translates. Finally, let me, let me conclude with this because I, 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 do, I would like to you know, have any questions that you might have. Uh, take a little bit of time for that. Uh, my friends, the fact of the matter is that we have a situation where we need to get our friends involved. We cannot, we cannot continue to vote in these meager, in these meager uh, amounts. There are two things in our nation, in our politics of our nation, that are important. Money and votes. I don't know how many of you have the money to compete, you know, with the, the chamber people, but I know that we have the votes that we can compete with them. And this is what we need to do. We cannot, my friends, we cannot, cannot continue just to limp along. This past week, we lost a ton, a ton of, of uh, races at the local level, at the school board level. Why? Because they, they, the enemy, the leftists, the liberals, the rhinos, they see us screaming and stopping Common Core. And my friends, if they want to control anything, they want to control education. Right. Yep. Education. Because in education, you take the kid and you mold them. We had a big battle two years ago in San Antonio over pre-K because Julian Castro, who is now being interviewed by Hillary as her possible running mate, Julian stepped forward and he said that he was going to be the education person, the education mayor. Okay? And Michelle Obama was down there two weeks ago to applaud him for that. This pre-K program, all it is is nothing but daycare for four-year-olds and five-year-olds. But in the process of that daycare, you know what they're teaching them? That it's okay for Sally to have two daddies. That it's okay if Sally wants to play and experiment when she gets older. That it's okay that uh, the government takes care of people. This is what they're teaching them. I had a big debate with a professor at UTSA two years ago. And you know what that professor told me? She said, she had the nerve to say that the government does a better job of raising kids. Okay? So if that doesn't scare you, nothing does. We need, my friends, remember this saying, remember this saying as I close, that the defense of liberty and, and freedom, it starts at the local level. Because that's how the Constitution was written. It starts at the local level. Which means the school district, the city council, the county, 
That's where it starts, the battle. And that is what they want to take away from us. They want to control it. So that that way, then they can have special ethnic studies. Then that way they can have special lesbian and homosexual studies. That way they can teach a more liberal, a more inclusive, and that way they can keep people like George Rodriguez from ever coming on the campus to speak. You know? So my friends, this is the battle. I'm trying to connect the dots for you. That immigration is just a part of it, but it's a big part of it. We need to stand up and be heard and not be afraid. They've called me a racist lots of times. Doesn't bother me. You know, they called me a Nazi one time. You know? Okay? Call me what you will, just don't call me late for dinner. Okay? These are terrible, trying, perilous times. Mostly because we just can't get our folks to get out there to the polls. You know, that's why. And if we lose the immigration battle, my friends, if we lose the immigration battle, it's, it, it, you know, we, we lost the Obamacare battle. We've got Boehner and others saying, well, we're not going to be able to repeal it. We'll just fix it. No. No. Get rid of it. Same thing with the border. Two things. What part of no do you not understand? Repeal Obamacare and stop the illegal flow. Two things. What's so difficult about two things? But we're racist. We're antagonistic towards poor people if we do either one. And so, questions. Let me conclude with that. Any questions? Yes, sir. I'm not trying to argue with you. I just want to throw out how how, would you, how do you react to someone? I'm sure you've heard this. Uh, a person, uh, a young person, comes as a child or an infant, 